Big Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching the Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. He taught me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you gotta do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open. Listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there. And I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it. Fat Man Scoop, Big Brando. Let's go. Sad and everybody, boy Big Brando, and today let's talk about downtown Los Angeles Fashion District. Now, for those of you in the Los Angeles area or Southern California area in general, you might have heard me talk about the Fashion District in downtown LA. This is where there are a lot of different suppliers and vendors and wholesalers for everything you could think of in the fashion garment industry. Blank t-shirts, blank socks, blank bags, blank hats, blank jackets, jerseys, you name it, they got it down here. For those of you that are not from Los Angeles, I'm pretty sure in whatever downtown area you have in one of your major cities, chances are you have a fashion district or a garment district. If you have a diamond district or a jewelry district, chances are the fashion one is somewhere around that area. Here in Los Angeles, it's on Main Street, north of the 10 freeway. Way. A lot of people don't understand what that means. If I'm standing on Main Street, the 10 freeway is right above me. If I'm looking north, everything north of the 10 freeway on Main Street is where you want to be. Everything south of the 10 freeway on Main Street has to do with garments and apparel also, but it's more of a manufacturing side of the street. So if you're looking for embroidery machines, heat presses, screen print supplies, screen print screens, screen print shops, embroidery shops, seamstress, textile companies, stuff like that, that's south of the 10 freeway. Just to draw you a small picture if you got off the 110 freeway on Adams and went to Main Street starting from there and going north you'll run into like McLogan's if you wanted to buy screen print supplies graffiti supplies decal vinyl heat transfer vinyl they got it all there I buy stuff from there all the time a really good source and a really good store to go into and just buy supplies. That's on Main Street south of the 10 freeway. Like I said, you're gonna find a lot of different screen print shops, screen print supplies places on Main Street going towards the 10 freeway. Now, right after you pass the 10 freeway, you go underneath the freeway, you're still on Main Street, and now you're on the other side of the freeway. If you were looking for a blank anything, this is where you wanna be. You're on Main Street, north of the 10 freeway. You'll even see there are shops underneath the freeway. Way. Blank hats, blank bags, blank t-shirts, you'll find shops right there. You can find somewhere to park and just walk the street. One of the good hat spots that I used to hit, it used to be called Rain Caps. I think they changed their name to like 2060 or 4060 Caps. They're on like 17th and main or maybe 16th and main it's one of the first blocks once you pass the freeway if you're going north on main it's on the left hand side they have like yellow signage on top yellow and blue signage on top that says like embroidery and caps you'll see all the hat decals on the window that's a good spot to buy blank hats they carry all the brands like the Yupon Classic is in there. There's just wall-to-wall -wall hats in there. There's a ton of different brands carried in there. Good place to buy hats. Right next to there is a place that sells socks. Right next to there is a place that sells like licensed NBA, MLB, NFL type stuff. Across the street I think is a Chevron and there might be a, like a weed shop next to that. And then right across the street from there is a mannequin shop that sells those grid displays like I have in my shop. You can find all kind of different display type things. Everything from like glass cases, like I said, the mannequins, half torso mannequins, hangers, the little plastic heads to put hats on top of, all of that stuff could be found there. They also have poly mailers and the clear poly bags to put t-shirts in, all that stuff found there. Going a little bit more, you'll find a lot of different t-shirt suppliers. One that I use is King Sportswear. I don't get paid by any of these companies. These are just places, local places that I go to when I'm on Main Street. If I'm ever in the fashion district, these are the places that I hit up. King Sportswear is one that carries All Style Pro Club. They carry a bunch of different brands in there, but if I needed some shirts in a pinch and I couldn't order from my regular suppliers, this is somewhere that I can just drive and pick my stuff up. You could walk in there they sell everything by the dozen so it's like a dozen of the same size same shirt same brand same color that's how you buy so you just say all right give me a dozen of white pro clubs extra large give me a dozen black extra large pro clubs i need a dozen 2x whatever you're buying that's how they operate a lot of places down there operate by the dozen so keep that in mind and 
cash is king down there. Now, if you're at King Sportswear, there's a lot of different vendors there, so just pop into any of them and see what they have. Across the street is where I used to get jerseys from. I don't remember the name of the place, but they're next to the Decky building. This is where I used to get basketball jerseys and football jerseys. I don't know if this is just their private label stuff that they sell, but I don't remember it having like an actual brand name on the tags, but I would go in there, buy basketball shorts, I would buy basketball jerseys, Football jerseys were a big thing. A lot of this stuff was polyester. So if you are planning on heat pressing something on there, you're gonna wanna get some stuff that has like a sub blocker on top of there to eliminate the dye migration from the polyester. Like I said, the basketball shorts were polyester, the, ba the basketball jerseys were polyester, and the football jerseys were polyester. But this is where I used to buy them from. So directly across from King Sportswear, if you're on Main Street still, directly across from King Sportswear, I don't remember the name, you're gonna see there's a lot of shops and vendors there that don't have signage like of a name. They might just have the address number and that's it. But just take a walk and walk into all these different spots. So when I was doing sublimation on socks, before I found out about Silky Socks, this is where I was going to. I would go to the vendor that was selling socks and underwear, and then I would just ask for polyester socks or socks that had polyester ankles. Not necessarily the footbed, but I wanted to make sure that the ankle of the sock, like on crew socks, was polyester so I could sublimate on that. But you could also buy leggings, sports bras, underwear, socks, all from this same vendor. And there's a lot of them on that street. And then if you go down a little bit more, you're gonna find somebody that sells jackets. This is where I used to get all of my Letterman jackets done. On the same side, not on the same side as King Sportswear, but across the street, we're still on Main Street. We haven't even hit Pico yet. This is where I would get all my Letterman jackets done. Leather sleeves, wool bodies, Full leather all the way around, full wool all the way around. Different elastics, different collars. You guys hear me talk about manufacturers that do jackets. I used to go to ISS looking for jacket manufacturers and this is where I found them. They're located on Main Street also. You'll see they have a bunch of jackets in their windows. A lot of high schools go here to get patches put on jackets, but they can also create the jacket in full for you here. So remember, we're on Main Street still. I haven't even got to Pico. You could pass Pico and go up more and there's a lot more vendors. There's a lot more embroidery shops. There's patch makers on this street. You could buy all of your shipping supplies here from t-shirt bags to clear poly bags to custom printed poly mailers to printed boxes, different size boxes. All of this stuff can be found here. If you go east, so you're on Main Street, if you go to the next street over, which is Los Angeles Street, there's a lot of vendors there too. After that, you're gonna get to Santee. After Santee, you're gonna get to Maple. These are like the big major streets going east if you're on Main Street. Once you get closer to Santee and Maple, there's gonna be a lot of different stuff. There's seamstress around there. There's a lot of textile companies out there. There's a lot of like fabrics and stuff like that you could buy. But also you run into a lot of B-grade blank t-shirts going east of Main Street. All the ones on Main Street, like King's sportswear, rain caps or 4060 caps or whatever it's called now. Those places I've never had an issue with B-grade blanks, but I did notice the closer I got to Santee and Maple, some of those vendors had B-grade type shirts, meaning stitching might be off, sizing might be a little off. Um, visually, you might not be able to tell right away, but then you'll notice if the tags are snipped, like if they have the tag, but there's like a cut through them, a lot of times that means it is a B-grade or a defected shirt. These are some of the things that I used to run into before. Prices used to be a little bit cheaper, but that's because there were imperfections on there. Sometimes the imperfections could be very minor that you can't even tell, but it didn't pass that company's quality check, so the t-shirts ended up there. So just be wary on where you're purchasing from. Like I said, if you're on Main Street, you're pretty good. Once you cross Los Angeles and get closer to Santee, and not necessarily the alleys, but just Santee the street, and then if you get to Maple, you'll notice there's a little bit of a difference, right? But walk around that whole area, you know what I mean? pick up whatever you wanted to. I know there's a lot of weird misconception right now, especially on TikTok and Instagram with people talking about you gotta check in and, and tapping in and what the difference is and, and all of that stuff. For myself, my definition of checking in and tapping in with somebody is just contacting somebody in that local area that's kind of privy to what's going on and just seeing if the spot's cool. You know what I mean? It's not asking for permission to be in that area. It's not asking for security, but I like to have a heads up. Like if you ever travel any 
anywhere, a lot of you check the weather before you go, right? And that's so you know what to be prepared for and what to pack. Checking in for me is exactly that. And maybe this is just a Los Angeles thing to do when you go to somebody else's area, but I do this all the time. Like for instance, like I went to Vegas not too long ago. It's like a week ago. And before I went to Vegas, if I'm on the strip, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. You know what I mean? But if I'm going anywhere off the strip, that's not populated by tourists and outsiders and stuff like that. If I'm going somewhere off the strip, like to a restaurant or something, I'm going to contact somebody from the city who I value their input. And I have a pretty good feeling that they know what's going on out there to find out if it's safe for a bunch of people that look like myself to be out there getting something to eat. If I'm going into like a crazy area or something like that, I want to know beforehand, right? So I reached out to a few people that I know that live in Vegas and I value their input just to get the climate and see what it's like and say, hey man, you know what? I heard about this restaurant right here. I heard you talk about this restaurant. Is that somewhere that an outsider can go that is traveling with a bunch of dudes that look exactly like myself? Are we going to cause a lot of attention? Are we going to get jammed up in any way? Is this somewhere that I should only go during the day and not at night? I'm just trying to be prepared prepared for what's to come or if it's something that I don't want to get myself into or the people I'm traveling with then I'll stay away you know what I mean but I just like to get that heads up so when people talk about checking in and tapping in that's exactly what I do I'm not saying you have to do that but if you have people out here in Los Angeles it's not asking for permission but you could be like hey you know what I'm planning on going down to the fashion district it's right here on Main I heard some dude on YouTube talking about it what's your take on that what do you think the climate's like out there you know I'm traveling it's just me and my girl or it's just you know me and a couple of homies or whatever it is all you're doing is you're just getting the broad idea of what things are like from a local to let you know all right you know what don't go past this street or don't go over here or if you're gonna do that i would suggest going in the morning and not in the evening just getting a better idea you know what i mean it's not that i am the gatekeeper of all this stuff and i'm not saying that main street is all lovely you might run into occasional crazies out there you know what i mean they're everywhere so if you do come out here and you do plan on walking the streets and walking the Santee alley and walking maple walking down pico towards all that you know what i'm saying just travel safely come with some people be aware of your surroundings and you'll have a good time you know what i mean especially if you're out here looking for vendors and looking for people it's weird because a lot of people make these tiktok videos like hey this is where you need to buy wholesale and this is where you need to do this but they're not really explaining what the climate's like or explaining on what the surrounding area is like so if i'm an outsider coming in and i'm like oh i heard about this spot on the internet and i don't really know my way around over there and what streets i'm parking on or where i'm walking and all this stuff i'm gonna be trying traveling with a little bit of hesitation you know what I mean so I'm just letting you guys know if you come out here and decide to walk the fashion district Main Street is a big street you walk, there are occasional crazies and weirdos out there but a lot of it is people just trying to handle business you know what I mean going in here looking for vendors picking up blank t-shirt you'll see all the vans and trucks parked on the side that's going into these spots and picking up bag loads of blank goods to take to their shops and, and carry on about their business so if you are planning on coming out to downtown LA to the fashion district i would advise going morning towards the afternoon one you want to beat the traffic out of there you want to get parking close to wherever you're going to be uh moving about but you also want to avoid all the craziness that that goes on in downtown so when you hear people talk all that check-in stuff and tap-in stuff it's just talking about hitting up somebody that's local to the area and finding out what the climate's like it's not asking for permission it's not saying you're not welcome here but i do this when i travel anywhere if i'm going to hawaii man if i go out there all the time multiple times throughout the year my family's out there. I'll hit up cousins and uncles and people that are privy to the area and be like, hey, check it out, man. I'm going to be out here for this long. I'm going to be doing this. You got any reservations about where I'm going? And they'll tell me straight up, hey, you know what? You don't want to be on that side at this time or this side over here. They're breaking into cars all the time because they could spot tourists or this is a highly active area out this way. I would go there during the day and not at night, whatever. You know what I mean? And that way I just mentally prepare myself on what I'm doing and so I can move accordingly. You know what I mean? So if you're thinking about coming out to downtown LA to the fashion district, like I said, everything is on Main Street. 110, get off on Adams. It's right by USC. Instead of going towards USC, you're going east. Go to Main Street, hit Main Street and go north. McLogan's is out there. King Sportswear is out there. Rain Caps or 4060, 2040, whatever it's called, cap spot. The jersey plug, the jacket plug, hoodies, all that stuff is on Main Street for you. If you're coming from out of town, a lot of people come from San Diego. Diego, Bakersfield, Northern California, they come down so they can pick up supplies and pick up blanks and all that stuff. If you're coming from out of town, get there early. You know what I mean? If you guys got any questions, 
I don't want anybody saying, man, you gatekeeping and all this. I just gave you guys all the suppliers that I go to in downtown LA. That's where you guys could be moving and shaking too. You guys could pick up blanks and do everything that you need to or find other vendors that I'm not privy about. You know what I mean? And if you already frequent the fashion district, let me know in the comments. Or if you plan on coming out, this and that, leave it in the comments. Maybe somebody else got some tips for you in the comments too, all right? Follow me on Instagram, Big Brando TV. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.